This video is sponsored by Exter. Welcome to Animal World, a movie about a broke man who thinks he can win a deadly tournament to fund his mom's cancer treatment. In this video, we will check out the plot, gently point out the mistakes the characters make, judge them in a completely non-judgmental way like a psychotherapist, and finally, beat the deadly tournament on a ZGI cruise ship. Sounds fun? Well, spoilers ahead, it is. Welcome to Binge Express, I hope you love the show today. Oh, and it may just be a click for you, but a like and a comment go a long way. Love you. Did you enjoy Squid Game? If yes, then you will enjoy this movie as well. Let's lay out the plot real quick. This is Zheng, a broke young man who works as a clown at a gacha store. He currently can't keep up with the medical bills of his mother, who is in a coma at the local hospital. In short, his life is miserable. His father has recently passed away, and his crush, who is a nurse at the same hospital, is constantly being sexually harassed by her patients. Before we continue, a few words from our sponsor. Exer Wallet creates beautiful and high quality wallets that you should consider if you are in need of a new one. So I've been using this beautiful dark olive green wallet from Exer lately and it is a game changer. I've always been using those conventional wallets that wear out too quickly and just take away too much space. But I don't see that happening with Exer though and I am not complaining. The smooth card mechanism initiated by just an easy push right here fans out the cards perfectly. It's actually fun to use. It's minimal, it's compact and of very high quality. My olive green wallet has a luxurious leather finish that looks great and smells good too, if you are that kind of person. However, the aluminium version, that one right here, is also pretty cool. Same basic functions, but it comes with an RFID protection plate that keeps out any unwanted skimming attempts trying to hijack your data. It's a nice extra touch for some additional security. But if you want ultimate security though, Exter also offers a credit card size tracker that lets you track your wallet worldwide, which is pretty cool. Now for a discount right now, click on our link in the description and upgrade your money game. I think it's generally worth it, you will not be disappointed. With that said, thank you Exter for sponsoring this video and sending me these uh, wallets, I love them. And now, back to the movie. It might make sense to add that Zheng has a pretty vivid imagination. He frequently indulges in pretty colorful fantasies about him beating up monsters, as a clown. But I guess daydreaming is a good strategy to beat the gruesome reality of life, right? In his dreams, he becomes a cool version of Ronald McDonald and then beats up men in black creatures and caused them to bleed rainbows. Hell yeah. Anyway, his situation is terrible and his money slowly running out. But then, like all good stories, he is visited by his dodgy former school friend who currently works as a real estate agent. His former friend comes up with a perfect plan. Buy a 6 million UN condo and resell it for 12. <laughs> Jesus, why have I never thought about that? They would roughly make 1 million USC in profit and all their problems would be solved immediately. Of course, they could just buy some rainbow shitting monkey NFTs and they would be good for generations to come. But I guess four years ago, that was not a thing yet. To fund the deal, Zheng has to take a mortgage on his mother's condo, the only thing his family actually possesses. But what happens next is exactly what you would think would happen. His dodgy friend gambles the condo away, leaving Zheng back more desperate than ever before. Ouch. But luckily, bald, leather jacket wearing Chinese guys with menacing haircuts are a thing. In one of the days prior to the upcoming deadly tournament, of which he doesn't know yet, he is followed by this bald guy that looks like he fell into my girlfriend's powder pouch. Jesus. He kidnaps Jiang and brings him to Michael Douglas, which is a pretty weird twist, but I am not complaining. Anyway, what happens there is basically nothing more than another breakdown of his very desperate situation and that there is virtually no way out. Unless, of course, he accepts the absolutely not planned offer from Michael to participate in an upcoming tournament where he can write off all of his debts while also earning enough money to finally marry his crush, free her from the nasty grips of her patients and afford appropriate healthcare for his mother. All he has to do is survive. Sounds great? No, since Squid Game, probably not. However, Zheng has no other choice but to accept the offer. Desperate situations call for drastic action. He returns to the hospital, says farewell to his mom, leaves his crush back in tears and embarks on a deadly journey to regain his honor and life. Let the games begin. Wow. 
Once the cruise ship on which the games are held enters international waters, the participants are released from their cells. Just like in Squid Game, each person bears a number. Zheng is stamped with the number 72. As they walk along the corridor, each person receives a bag. In the background, a female voice speaks a few words of wisdom. Among those words, she says that no act of violence is permitted during the games. So if you thought you could go on a suicide rampage, I am sorry to disappoint. Not allowed. As all of them gather in the main hall, Michael Douglas is having a speech. Now, first of all, who says that the game has not started yet, right? Every little detail is of utmost importance at this point. You have no idea what will happen, so anything could become your advantage or, for that matter, disadvantage. I would not want to draw any attention to me, okay? If I were Zhang, I would cover my head with my hoodie and stand somewhere on the side away from the main crowd. This place looks more like a casino. There are various desks with dealers and a caged tiger in the middle of it. Whatever the hell that means, I'm not sure, but this is uh, a Chinese movie, so stop questioning stuff. Finding an escape route does not make any sense either, since we are on open sea, so I would not waste my energy for that. Let's reveal the rules of the upcoming games. First, in each bag there are 12 cards, 4 rock cards, 4 paper cards, and 4, you guessed it, scissor cards. Second, the game that is played is obviously rock, paper, scissor. Third, each person has a belt with three stars attached. So basically, it's Tool Island without Millennium Artifacts and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. We know where the producers of this movie got inspiration from though. Now, players play each other, only. Each card must be placed upside down onto the tables and both cards must be revealed by the dealer. Whoever wins receives one star and whoever loses, loses one. Simple. The goal is to have at least three stars and zero cards left. That means 12 rounds must be played. The time count is set to 4 hours, after which you will be eliminated, whatever that means, should you not have at least 3 stars and 0 cards. You furthermore lose when you arrive at 0 stars, when you have 3 stars but 1 or more cards, or when you try throwing away or destroy any of your cards. However, stars and cards can also be transferred freely, so you might give away or receive cards or stars. There is also a bank where loans can be taken. With these loans, one might buy cards or stars from other players. It is also stated that there are no rules. Virtually anything is possible, including cheating, unless that involves violence or destroying the cards, as we mentioned before. Let the games begin! Alright, so first of all, this is a game played solo, so don't bother teaming up with anybody, and for God's sake, don't trust anyone. Being naive in the animal world will get you killed. What I would do first is stand by a nearby table and watch how other players play. That way I can confirm that I haven't missed anything because I usually do and know exactly how the game is played. In Rock Paper Scissor, you have a 33.33% chance of winning. However, for you guys, I went into the dark depths of the internet and found out a few interesting points. You see, statistically speaking, people are more likely to play Rock as their first hand. Meaning if you start the game with paper, you have a better chance of winning. The second curious thing is, players who lose a round are much more likely to switch their hand in the next. That means if you play scissor and your opponent paper, they would more likely either play rock or scissor in the next round. Meaning if you then play rock, the worst case would be a tie. Right. However, there is one risk with this strategy. If your opponent knows this as well, you're which means that you may very well lose sticking to those two methods. So, here's what I would do instead. I would play each hand completely randomly. So random that even I don't know what I'm playing. Plus, a nice addition to that tactic is that nobody could scout my cards from behind. Boom. Win. You see, if I must play 12 rounds and each round I have a 33.33% chance of winning, I should win 4 times. And 4 wins equal 4 stars. Now with that said, Zheng is Chinese, and therefore he is one of 1.4 billion math geniuses in this world. So let us have a look on how he's doing it. That's a bad thing. First of all, don't let yourself be touched by anyone, alright? Stealing is not prohibited. Basically, I suggest you walk around like you would in any major city in this world. Keep your shit in your front pockets and don't talk to strangers, my friends. I mean, look at this guy. This guy looks like a con man. I mean, look at his obnoxious red suit. This is a screaming red flag, isn't it? So here's what happens. The dude comes to Zheng with the following plan. 
Since all of them have identical cards, they could just tie each round and would end up with three stars and zero cards at the end. Sounds fantastic, right? It's a win-win for both. But of course, we already know where this will go. Now they put their cards into identical order and start playing the game, because Zheng is an idiot. After a couple of ties, Zheng being visibly happy about having met this guy, he loses a round. At this point, the Chinese con man has just begun. <laughs> he storms over to our character and apologizes, admitting to have made a mistake. He promises Zheng that he will play Scissor in the next game so that he can win back his star. To make him believe, he shows the card just before playing it. However, Zheng is played again. You know shit is bad when a Chinese man is tricked by another Chinese man. This is serious and I do not want to be on that shit, alright? Anyway, Zheng has one star left and less than half of his cards. He has also learned to not trust anyone ever again. I mean, this dude caught trust issues in the first game on this ship. Ouch. He slowly realizes that he is in the animal realm where the strongest survives. There is no place for morality. Although, arguably, the strategy of the con man before was pretty solid. It would have been a win-win. It's beyond me why he would do him like that. But it's actually quite obvious why he did that. Okay, so hear me out. The reason why he cheated was to get extra stars. Now it is true that 3 are enough to win the game and survive, but every extra star is extremely valuable and can be sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars once the game concludes. Anyway, after a short breakdown like me after my last math exam, Zheng is woken up by his dodgy real estate friend from before. Now if I was Zheng I would beat this dude up, steal the stars and go about my day, but violence is prohibited. I mean, it's this guy's fault that we're here. I think he's the last person to trust on this ship. Apart from the red flag wearing guy, of course. But Li Jun, that's the name of this guy, has a good apology for what happened. And so, both of them reconcile and team up for the rest of the game. Which is a good thing. Now, Li Jun mentions that once you lose all of your stars, you will be put behind a black curtain until the game ends. Then, during the last 10 minutes of the game, you will have the chance to be let go if any one of the winners choose to buy you out. However, if you don't get out, you will become a lab rat at the bottom of this ship, which sucks unless you're into free drugs. But anyway, they conclude that they need to find someone with less than 3 stars, but no remaining cards. They would then convince that guy to team up with them in return of a third star. Smart move, and they do find one. However, the next idiotic move they pull is handing their cards over for this guy to check. Why would he do that? I mean, why would he do something so reckless just minutes after you got scammed twice? That's ridiculous, okay? You get the point, right? This happens. Yep, the fat guy stole a card and tries his luck. You can't blame him, right? I mean, he has a 33.33% chance of surviving this game in the next 30 seconds. Most people would pull the same move. And since our characters did not bother taking care of their cards before, I would argue they deserved this outcome. But anyway, the fatty loses, and uh, we are back to square one, just with one less star. Thank you. Now, upon beating him up, he pulls out a photo of his daughter and plays the victim. Now, Zhang takes the bait and lets him go. The three team up one more time, but this time with a genius strategy. Now you see, they have four scissor cards and only one rock card left. That's not very smart. You see, most players would distribute their cards evenly throughout the games, so that their last three cards they will have are all separate kinds, giving the most balanced chance to play. However, Zheng uses this discrepancy to his advantage. What they do next is the following. They scout for players with 9 cards and observe their next game. If that player plays rock and scissor in the next game, he is bound to play paper next. And since we have mostly scissor cards, and this future victim mostly paper cards left, we would most definitely walk away with 3 stars. While both go find the perfect victim, Zheng goes to take a loan to buy an extra star as a backup. However, the bank clerk literally repeats $500,000, causing this guy to hear it. Which is insane. Imagine you want to cash out on a HODL crypto assets that you have uh, saved over a decade and the clerk guy screams it out like he's selling tuna in Tokyo. What the f***? That's not cool, man. But anyway, the others uh, eventually spot the perfect victim and Zheng got 500k in cash ready to be spent. I think this is a good plan, okay? However, I would do this differently. 
You see, since we are a group of three, what I would do is have them scout my opponents from behind and pass me signs which card is being played next. It's a lame move, but we gotta survive. Another option would be to just scout other players and count their cards like they have done in the movie 21. Now in my opinion, it's just too risky to hold onto dozens of cards while the clock is ticking. So our three guys challenge the picked victim and win. They end up with 5 stars but 0 cards, so they can't play anymore. That means now the 500k will come into play to buy more cards. However, right now there are 119 rock cards, 122 scissor cards and only 97 paper cards still circulating. Meaning if they buy cards, the best pick would be rocks. Because once there are no paper cards left, rock is the only winning card. So they split up, hire two additional guys and have them buy as many rocks as possible. Now I personally find that a dumb move, because you run risk of being exposed. And once you're exposed, nobody wants to play with you no more, resulting in a definitive loss, right? So I would also opt for rock cards, but not as many as our characters. I mean, they end up with 30 rock cards, 2 scissor cards and 4 paper cards, which is overkill if you ask me. Especially since they only need 4 more stars to break even, and I guess that's the goal, right? Their plan though seems to be the perfect plan given the rapidly declining number of paper cards. I mean, for what it's worth, they could end up with more stars than they need to survive, which means a lot of money. However, Zhang then remembers a Chinese math story his father used to tell him. Now this story is real by the way, you can look it up. Just google the black Scottish sheep. It's a story told to young kids throughout China. The story goes like this, or at least one version of it. Now three kids are in Scotland. The first animal they see is a black sheep. The first kid says, the sheep in Scotland are all black. The second kid replies, no, all we can say from our point of view is that Scotland has black sheep. To which the third kid replies, no, 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 you're both wrong. From our point of view, all we can say is that this sheep has at least one black side. Now what Zheng means with this story is that whenever we are overly sure about something, we tend to ignore the bigger picture. They conclude to split up all the cards and have each of them go about their plan. That way they can split the pressure, the wit and therefore the chance of winning. If you ask me, I would still be opting for cheating, stealing and poisoning my fellow players with some rust induced water. But let us have a look on how they perform. Once they decide to enter the game, they shockingly realize that the paper cards have stopped declining, meaning that someone has bought all remaining paper cards to counter their attack. Our characters are screwed. Since the time is running out, the two guys panic and rush over to play their cards, but they are randomly picked and challenged to a game. Both lose, and it is revealed that they are the trio collecting the paper cards. But how did they know about our plan? Well, remember the clerk shouting out 500k loan? Exactly, it was heard by this guy right here. He then shadowed us and figured out the plan we had and prepared a counterattack, uh, aka collecting paper cards. However, Zheng, being the Chinese big brain that he is, accepts the challenge, convinces the enemy to play a game and bets 3 stars for 3 stars. After some hesitation, the guy accepts and Zheng walks away with 3 more stars. But they are not done yet. You see, if you want to succeed in life, all you need to do is be ferocious. So they decide to double down. Now, they approach the two same guys from before and buy all of their cards because they already have three stars and they just want to get rid of their cards, right? So they get all the cards and then Zheng walks over to the Italian guy who screwed us with his paper cards and pressures him into giving us all his cards for free. Plus 100k, by the way. He also wants 100k on top of that. Now, the Italian guy replies that, why would I give you 100k? There are so many people in here that want to buy my cards. Why should I pay you and give you my cards on top of that? But Zheng is a big brain, right? He's a Chinese big brain. So what he did before was the two guys that teamed up with the Italian guy uh, shared the information about which cards the Italian guy has. Meaning now, Zheng reveals that he knows exactly which cards the Italian guy has, threatening to let anyone else around know. There you go. Blackmail, A+. Now this results in our characters having 69 cards in total. 30 rock cards, 34 paper cards, and 5 scissor cards. Now, before you think that is bad because these are way too many cards, think again. 
In reality, they only need to lose one scissor card. Then, they would have perfectly even numbers to tie each game among themselves. But they also need one more star, right? So, you see, if you can manage to have allies, which is almost impossible, your goal should be to have even cards and then tie them out. However, the next problem is... <laughs> yes, you guessed it right. The con man from before, from the beginning, is preparing another strike. He figured out our character's plan and attempts to sabotage them one last time. What he does is, he plants fear in all other participants. He tells them with great public speaking skills how there aren't many cards left and that someone has been hoarding specific type of cards, which is us of course. This leads to all of them agreeing with him to reshuffle all cards and redistribute them. This results in our characters having to pass along all their 69 cards and receive random types in return, which is an instant loss if you think about it. The mistake our characters have made was they hired other people to buy cards for them, drawing way too much attention to them, leading to being exposed. Look, if you want to buy cards to skew the rates in your favor, you must do that very low key. But you also must manage to have paper cards steadily declining, although less frequently of course. That way everything appears to be normal even though it isn't. To do that, two of your teammates, which you apparently have, need to tie games using paper cards every now and then, right? In any way, the cards are reshuffled and distributed. But before our characters receive their share, the most hated guy in this movie becomes even more hated. this dude. At this point, I would be disqualified for engaging in violence. The clock is ticking though, and there are just minutes left. And then, Zheng has an idea. When he sees the con man trying to corner another player, Zheng realizes that he has tricked them again. In fact, he tricked everyone who gave him their cards to shuffle. Here's what happened. When he shuffled the cards, he marked the scissor cards, allowing him to prey on anyone holding them, while keeping the rock cards to himself. Well, after exposing this, Zheng gains the trust of all participants, while the con man is virtually outcasted by everyone around. Hell yeah. Now this leads to Zheng proposing to play against anyone since he has the most cards, but in a completely random way, just like that. That way he convinces the people that he is not cheating and that the game is truly dependent on luck. It's a pretty boss move. Now Zheng wins the first game and proceeds. Some he loses, other he wins, but the time is almost over. Then, he walks over to the con man who is still busy trying to convince other people that he is a saint, <laughs> wraps his arm around him and invites him to play a game. The moral of the story is, don't trust anyone, but also, don't create more enemies than necessary. Now Zheng has the con man slap himself, because I guess he can, and then of course, wins the game. However, the clock runs out too, resulting in Zheng having to go into the dark room himself. But at this point, his team has gathered 10 stars, enough to free Zheng and make a decent amount of money still. As Zheng is stripped naked and waits inside the black room, the auction starts. The price for one star currently sits at 500k. That is 2 million USD if the two sacrificed Zheng and sold all the stars for personal gain. And that is exactly what happens. Yep, money turns people into animals. And this, my friends, this is the animal world. So before Li Jun can initiate a transaction to free Zheng, the fat dude snatches them away and declines to save Zheng, saying that this money is enough for both of them to live fantastic lives forever thereafter. Which is kind of true, right? Now Li Jun looks at Zheng, tells him that he will take good care of his mom, turns his back and walks away as well. Zheng, against all his beliefs, is sacrificed by the very person whose fault it is that he isn't here in the first place. Now this is enough to turn a man into a savage, right? But at this moment, Zheng understands one thing. He understands that those inside the black room, if they want to be bought free, must provide a greater value than those three stars achieve on the market. That's when he figures it out. He attacks one of his inmates, secretly rips away the bandage on this guy's back, and secures his way out. So what happened was that this guy, to ensure that he is bought out by his companions, hid a pack of raw diamonds inside of his body. 
He therefore is more valuable than those three stars. It is also revealed that he has been participating in this game multiple times, meaning he knows exactly how to play. So basically, in short, if you want to win this game, the best strategy is to have enough value hidden inside of you, I leave it up to you how you go about that, that you then can exchange in return of being released. However, now Zheng has the diamonds and is freed without any hesitation, right? So this strategy is, is a win-win. You cannot lose if you follow this one rule, right? Be of enough value. Before Zheng can walk out like a boss though, he is halted by an older man begging him to deliver a message to his one and only son. Now Zheng walks out, loses himself once again in his Ronald McDonald fantasy world, beats up the remaining monsters in a beautiful final showdown and wins the fight. Not just against the animals around him, but also against the animal world itself. Because one thing Zheng does that nobody else did was staying humble and honest. Because what he does after he beats up the glasses guy who cheated him twice is he takes the stars and despite them being enough worth to secure his future life, he trades them to save the old men from before instead. Proving that he does not trade his values for the mere sake of monetary gain. How about that? Zheng wins the game without sacrificing his honor. And the rest is history. Now, would you have sold the stars for personal gain, or would you have done the same thing like Zheng? And how would you have played the game anyway? Let me know in the comments, and as always, binge another one. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and with that said, I catch you guys again. Peace.